Go Inside the Crimson Tide with your hosts, Rodney Orr and Gary Harris, keeping you informed on everything Alabama. Tighter Insider TV, brought to you by Visit Tuscaloosa. And hello again, everybody, and welcome into the latest edition of Tider Insider TV, brought to you, as you heard, by Visit Tuscaloosa, alongside Rodney Orr from TiderInsider.com. I'm WVUA 23 Sports Director Gary Harris. Well, Alabama football wrapped up, but basically it's second week of fall camp with a scrimmage on Saturday and fan day on Sunday. Alabama, of course, in full pads on uh, Saturday for the scrimmage, and this is some uh, uh, file video of practice uh, I think this is actually from today, and uh, but on Saturday they had the full pass scrimmage, and on Sunday uh, it was the fan day, Rodney. And of course, we were not allowed to view the scrimmage, although we did hear from head coach Kalen DeBoer. He said that uh, he was happy with how few penalties there were, uh, not many alignment issues, 102 plays, and he said the offense didn't have any fault starts. And uh, he uh, talked about it. We'll get to him here in just a moment. But first, uh, you you know, did a little notes package from information that you were able to gather talking to sources in regards to the scrimmage based on what you found out. And I read your notes package, and we had you on the radio yesterday, too, on my show, and listening to Coach DeBoer. It seems, for somebody who didn't see it, like myself, that the scrimmage went pretty well. Yeah, by all indications, it really did. I mean, like Coach DeBoer said, there was give and take. You know, anytime a guy makes a sack, that means somebody on the offensive line got beat, right? So there was give and take, but uh, a lot of competitiveness out there, a lot of great athletes, a lot of great plays that were made, big plays offensively. Uh, you talk about the quarterbacks, Jalen Milrow, Ty Simpson, the receivers made some big plays, Gary. So all in all, the defense did re- pretty well too. Uh, so I think there's a lot of encouraging things from scrimmage one. And here are some pictures, still pictures from Saturday's scrimmage. There you see Jalen Milrow, uh, Malachi Moore. Uh, Ronnie, were you able to gather from your you know, information gathering that you know, on who might have been, you know, who might have stood out individually in in the scrimmage? I think sometimes in these first scrimmages it's really difficult. A lot of guys get into the action. Uh, A lot of it, it's not necessarily uh, individuals that, that really stand out, highlighted, uh, in this scrimmage, as Coach DeVore said. But you know what? There he is right there. Ryan Williams made the first big play of the scrimmage, according to the things we've heard, a 50-yard touchdown reception from Jalen Milrow. Uh, Gary, everyone wants to know, is Ryan Williams the real deal? He is. There's C.J. Dupree, the tight end. He made some big plays. The tight ends were really evident in this scrimmage. C.J. Dupree, Josh Cuevas. Uh, there you see Wilkin Formby, who worked with first team at right tackle, the, the redshirt freshman from here in Tuscaloosa doing an outstanding job. So, yeah, there were a lot of big plays that were made by several players. One thing that we know, and and this scrimmage coming up uh, this Saturday really will be it as far as the last full contact scrimmage, is that they've been looking at a lot of people, trying to get a lot of reps. They're going to start narrowing it down now, won't they, Rodney, as far as who are the ones, who are the twos, uh, you know, and start kind of getting into not game week mode, but in preparation mode in terms of these are the guys that are going to be playing on Saturdays. Yeah, I think this scrimmage probably helps them go in that direction. Uh, you know, gives them a better idea, although they probably already have some some thoughts on that. But uh, I think it's a big scrimmage for a lot of guys who are looking to try to make a role for themselves. Yeah, indeed. That uh, is coming up Saturday. And then after that, uh, you know, school will be starting up. Fall camp will be coming to an end. Uh, one guy that we want to talk about, Rodney, before we get to coach talk is because you, we've talked so much about these young receivers and the athleticism. But a guy who's kind of flying under the radar a little bit is number seven, Cole Adams. That's why I go Oklahoma, a guy who was highly recruited. You know, people want to kind of label him as a possession receiver, but he can move. He can yeah, motor. He really can. I, I think he ran in the 10, 7, 10, 800 meters, maybe even faster in high school. This guy that was injured his senior year, he had committed to Nick Saban. He followed through through with that. Uh, he's made a lot of big plays. I think he had a 25-yard touchdown reception from Ty Simpson in this scrimmage. But you keep hearing the name, Cole Adams. You know what, Gary? If people watch Tider Insider TV, we've been talking mm-hmm. about Cole Adams for a long time here. Uh, but he, he's done a fantastic job this camp. I think he's pushing to be in that top five rotation. All right, let's get to uh, Coach Talk with Coach DeVore. More on the scrimmage right now. Football is a contact sport. No. Nope be honest with you, really, it's a collision sport. But during practice, coaches work diligently to keep the collisions to a minimum in order to avoid injuries. However, to play tackle football, at some point, you have to practice tackling. And that's what the Crimson Tide did during the scrimmage on Saturday. So this wasn't uh, the first day uh, taking guys to the ground, but it, it really, you know, 
emphasizes all those drills that you've been doing up until this point, and now it's live for you know 100, 102 plays. And so um, I thought our guys did a good job uh, of, of of running to the ball, tackling. There's also the other side of it too. You want to see who can make people miss uh, when you create space for them. And you know there was a time or two where just the offense should win out in there in the in the wide open space uh, and got to make that guy miss. And on Sunday, Alabama held its open practice for fans. Anyone that wanted to could attend and watch the entire practice. And then it was the Yay Alabama autograph select, uh, session afterwards. Now, you had to be a Yay Alabama member to get on the field, but you didn't just get autographs. You got to visit with the players, Coach DeBoer. I mean, these guys really went out of their way to make these fans feel special. There's Ryan Williams. Um, Alabama head coach Kayon DeBoer had the longest line, of course, really it stretched from one end zone. He was in the north end zone all the way to the south end zone, Rodney. So, uh, great, great day. Great opportunity for fans. And they got to watch a practice. And, you know, again, this was, even though they were in full pads, some guys sat it out coming off the scrimmage. Not a lot of contact. But let's get back to what I talked about and you heard Coach DeBoer talk about it. You don't want to have injuries. At the same time, when you play the games, you're going to tackle people. You have to get some tackling in. And that probably, even in practice when they're thudding and sometimes maybe even going to the ground, there's nothing like a scrimmage where it's live. And you don't want to get anybody hurt, but you have to practice tackle football, right? You really do. And, and, you know, here's the thing, Gary. You're looking around the country right now. I'm seeing a lot of injuries that are non-contact right. injuries. Yeah. I mean, it can happen. It's not necessarily when you get hit. Uh, uh, so a lot of these things happen, and it's just you can't explain it. But, uh, yeah, very important for that. You, you mentioned the tackling. I think those things, you know, the fundamentals are, are until you do it, to actually make that contact, I think that, that you know, it's, it's difficult. So you really have to work on that and, and refine that. And the question surrounding this defense with a new coordinator and a new scheme, 425, in your mind, are the questions more about pass coverage or playing the run or just a combination of the two? Well, as far as we're concerned, I, we just need to see the defense, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, no, I, I really think that uh, when you look at – I think there's a lot of talent, first of all. I think when you look at that secondary, people question it. You know, there's a lot of really talented players back there. They got four or five stars at corner, okay, coming out of high mm -hmm. school. It's a matter of the experience, the chemistry, developing all those guys, a lot of new guys there. So I think that corner position is something that really – is a concern in terms of those things that I've mentioned. Not because the talent's not there, but the pass rush, the things we're hearing, it's a lot of a lot of really positive things. All right. Another scrimmage coming up Saturday. Well, the Associated Press preseason top 25 poll was released yesterday, and it looks very similar to the coaches' poll. In fact, Alabama checked in at number five, just like in the coaches' poll. Another fact, all of the top five teams are the exact same order that they were in the coaches' poll, Alabama being voted fifth, their lowest ranking, as just like the coaches' poll since 2009. Of course, they won the national championship that year. They're tracking the same four teams that they were tracking in the coaches' poll, but Alabama's in good shape. I think you Coming at number five behind Georgia, Ohio State, Oregon, and Texas. You're right there. Nine teams from the SEC are in the poll. Alabama will play five of them. Uh, Georgia, Missouri, LSU, Tennessee, Oklahoma. I, I like being number five. I don't have a problem with it, Ronnie. You take care of your business, you're going to be right there. Now, playing five of those top 25 teams, Alabama's schedule, it, it, you know, five straight weeks of playing SEC teams. Uh, this schedule is a little, I, I will say, underrated because, you know, people talk about Georgia, they talk about Florida, but I think Alabama's schedule is a tough one. This is a grind. I mean, it's a real grind. And, you know, when you haven't gone through it before uh, as a coach, I mean, it's different. It, it's really different. I, I look at Texas. I think when you look at them with Sarkeesian, Although he has coached in the SEC, Gary, I think he's going to learn a lot about going through that SEC grind from week to week to week. You have a big win. I mean, you really don't have time to celebrate that. You have to move on to the next 24 week. 24-hour rule. All right, still to come on Tider Insider Television, a look at the new in-helmet technology that might revolutionize how we call plays in college football. And we got a recruiting update. It's kind of been slow a little bit with the focus now on getting ready for the season in fall camp. But... You know what? That running back from Quitman, Mississippi, A.K. Deer, he still weighs heavily on the man, for minds of Alabama coaches and fans. We'll have the latest on that, and we'll be getting your phone calls, emails, and tweets. Again, the phone number. Let's hear from you, Tider Insider Nation. The season is close. 205-348-WVUA. That's 348-9882, area code 205. There's the email address, TITV at WVUA23.com. If you want to send an email in, we'll be right back with the only show that takes you inside the Crimson Tide, Tider Insider TV.
good coaches, right, you try to minimize that, right? You try to be a human iPad, right, so that you can see things in real time and make adjustments. And we've taken great pride in doing that. So, you know, I wonder if it will be an equalizer to coaches that can't see in real time quite as well. Alabama used the new helmet to sideline communication technology for the first time this past Saturday in its scrimmage. The Crimson Tide also tried out the new rule, which allows iPads to be used on the sideline for in-game scouting. Welcome back to TITV, brought to you by Visit Tuscaloosa. Alongside Rodney Orr, I'm Gary Harris. It's unclear how big of an impact the new technology will have this season with the helmet-to-helmet -helmet communication. The feed shuts off with 15 seconds left on the play clock. And Rodney, you know, you don't have to use it, okay? But you know how coaches are. Usually they want to use the most up-to-date technology, my guess is that most of these teams in the SEC are going to give it a go. Oh, absolutely. I think, Gary, when you have that uh, opportunity to do, I mean, the, the, the things you can uh, you know, tell your players from the sideline, the information that you can share with them could be valuable in that 15 seconds, really valuable. Uh, Kane Womack talked about some of the checks that they could make and how quickly they could just, uh, assimilate that information to the to the to the uh, Mike linebacker uh, Deontay Lawson and how he could get it to seven or eight players, you know, like that. So I think it's a really big thing that will become very important. Offensive play calling wise, you think that's the way they'll call the plays, just with the voice, well, or I mean, do you think I, they'll yeah, still have a signaling? I think uh, they'll have both. Okay. I mean, I, th I think it depends on the situation, but you always want to have both. I would think. Uh, but, yeah, I think that could be really valuable in that regard in terms of uh, relaying the plays to the, the quarterback. All right. Rodney, not a lot to talk about in terms of recruiting. It's been a little bit slow, as is expected right now with, you know, getting ready for the season. But there is a guy out there that Alabama fans have had their fingers crossed on for some time in regards to Kim. And that's five-star running back Kylan Deer out of Quitman, Mississippi, six feet, 200 pounds. Uh, he's been a guy that, you know, Alabama's had their eye on. Um, he was at the cold summer cookout, but did not, you know, commit there. He, he and Alabama and he and Ole Miss seem to be going back and forth. It's almost like, you know, when you have two boyfriends or two girlfriends and you're one person, <laughs> that's kind of what it looks like with AK deer with Alabama and Ole Miss. What's, what's the latest? You know, look, I, I think probably we're going to have a decision relatively soon. Of course, I've been saying that for how long now? I mean, I really thought it would probably happen by now, but I do think this month he's, he's planning to do that wants to get it done before his senior year. Again, it could change, but I like Alabama's position. I really do. I still like Alabama here with AK deer. And again, even when he commits, Gary, it's a long process. As you know, Ole Miss wouldn't give up. You know, last season, 2,016 yards and 27 touchdowns as a junior. Listen, Quitman, Mississippi, you know, I worked in TV and Meridian for a while. Uh, they've had some athletes come out, but the last really big-time athlete from Quitman that came to Alabama was a guy named Tony McDice. Pretty good. Yeah, he was pretty good. <laughs> so, you know, and A.K. Deer <laughs> might, might be a, similar in, in, in the football side of things. All right, uh, Alabama will keep working that opportunity to get a commitment from him. Well, this SEC soccer preseason coaches poll has been released. Alabama's ranked fifth. The 2022 conference champions come in behind Arkansas, Texas, Georgia, and South Carolina. Of course, 2023, they had another really good year. The SEC has a record seven teams ranked in the top 25. Head coach Wes Hart's squad begins play against TCU on Thursday. The team beat LSU 2-1 to one in its exhibition game last Wednesday. Alabama's going to be really, really strong. Well, still to come on TITV, former Alabama running back Damian Harris. Not going to be playing on the sidelines anymore, but he's going to be reporting from them. We'll have more on that. And we'll be getting your phone calls, emails, and tweets. Go ahead and give us a ring so you can get through now. 205-348-9882. There's the email address. We want to hear from you, Tider Insider Nation. We'll do that next when TITV returns right after this timeout. Former Crimson Tide running back Damian Harris recently retired from the NFL, and now he's joining the Crimson Tide Sports Network as a sideline reporter for Alabama radio broadcast of the games this fall. He won two national championships with the Tide and played five seasons in the NFL with the Patriots and the Bills. He replaces Christian Miller, who announced that he's going to take a step back uh, from his broadcasting duties with CTSN. Uh, he already does a daily radio show on Tide 100.9 FM and 1230 AM WTBC, where I do my show, so I think he kind of wants to keep those weekends open. Harris joins the new uh, team of New play-by-play -play man Chris Stewart. Of course, color analyst Tyler Watts returns from last season. So it'll be Stewart, Watts, and Harris on the call for Alabama football on the radio this fall. All right, welcome back into TITV, brought to you by Visit Tuscaloosa with Rodney Orr. I'm Gary Harris. Let's jump out on the phone lines. Our pal Dale from down in Mountville is going to lead us off tonight. Good evening, Dale. Uh, good evening, uh, Rodney and Gary. Um, 
I'd like to say uh, Kendrick Law. This is a guy that has been here going on his third year now, and he's yet to record a touchdown that wasn't called back by a penalty. He looks like a first-round NFL draft choice, and the last two offensive coordinators has just seemed to me to drop the ball on him. And I was on pins and needles trying to hope that or hoping that I would hear something out of that scrimmage that where he caught the ball, he did something. Our RDBs must be really good but <laughs> if they can hold him. All I mean, right, we Dale. Yeah, we, we, get, we get the gist of it. Uh, Kendrick Law is an exciting, dynamic playmaker, and I still wonder if that incredible touchdown he had against Auburn last year stands and he goes to 14 to nothing. That game, I think, would have been a much different game. Uh, I agree with you. Um, We've heard since he's been here what a playmaker he is, and all that, and it just hasn't gotten the ball. I, I'm not disagreeing with you at all. I think that's going to change this year. I think this offensive staff is going to get the ball in K-Law's hands. Yeah, two years ago as, as a freshman, he was injured a lot. Yeah. Uh, towards the end of the year, the Ole Miss game, he kind of – started making his debut a little bit more. Uh, last year, I'm with you, Gary, and, and Dale. I, I wish he would have gotten the ball more often. But I think we're going to see it this year. I wouldn't pay attention to the scrimmage uh, statistics, Dale. I think Kendrick Law is going to get plenty of touches this year. Yeah, I think he'll be out there on the field when Alabama takes its first offensive snap against Western Kentucky. Might be out there on the kickoff at return if they're returning the opening kickoff. All right, let's get to our email question of the day, and it's brought to you by KDM Service Corporation. When it comes to heating and air conditioning needs, KDM Service Corporation serves your family like our family. This is from Larry in Meridian, Mississippi. Why is Jaheim Otis wearing number 10? Larry, because he's allowed to. Um, that's the new rules. I, I'm kind of with you on the numbers. I like defensive linemen being in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, maybe the 60s myself. But, you know, you got uh, Otis wearing 10, uh, Latham's wearing 20, Overton's wearing 22. Um, and they're, you know, these defensive linemen consider themselves skill athletes, and now they want to wear skill numbers, and they're allowed to do so. That's why. He, he wanted yeah. to wear it. And I, nobody's going to argue with him about who's going to yeah. wear number 10. Well, he's 91 for two yeah. years, right? So yeah. he wanted to get a lower number. I mean, a lot of these kids are fascinated with those lower numbers, yeah. obviously. And uh, But you know what? Uh, maybe he'll make it famous. Hey, you know, it's a, traditionally a quarterback number, but I can't imagine if, if he comes to you and says, hey, I'm taking 10, and you're a 6'2", 200-pound quarterback, and he's a 6'5", 300 pound, he probably you probably say, all right, you got it. The, the good <laughs> thing is, well, I don't know if it's good or not, but you can have two number 10s, or you can have duplicate oh, yeah. numbers. That's, That's right. Like yeah, so we're going to have some 10s <laughs> on offense, too. All right, that is going to do it for this segment. When we come back, though, uh, Shelby McEwen, former Alabama uh, high jumper, had a gold medal in his grasp at the Olympic Games, but he didn't get to take it home. We'll explain. And we'll get to more of your phone calls, emails, and tweets. You see the phone number right there on your screen, 205-348-9882. Phone lines, I'm told, are open. So Sam Holly says, why don't you give him a call and we'll get you on the show. We'll do that when we come back to TITV. <laughs> Former Alabama high jumper Shelby McEwen had gold, it appeared. He had a uh, jump of 2.36 meters, nearly 8 feet. That tied Hamish Kerr from New Zealand for the gold medal. Now, they both could have agreed to share the gold, but instead, they agreed to a jump off, and McEwen finished second, so he gets the silver. The Olympics wrapped up on Sunday. The United States tied China with 40 gold medals each, so McEwen's uh, gold, if he had won it, would have made it 41. But USA ran away with the total medal count with 126, but uh, they tied China for gold at 40. Bama had a big presence in the Olympic Games. Welcome back in to TITV, brought to you by Visit Tuscaloosa. And uh, we are going to get... To an uh, email, Rodney going to lead us off in this segment. Do you have any info? This is for Rodney. Do you have any info on Noah Carter? And uh, that's from Carter and Mobile. I wonder if he's related. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, Noah Carter, he's playing that outside linebacker, the wolf position, as they call it, uh, in this defense, Kane Womack's defense, uh, number 24. He, he very talented kid out of the state of Arizona that, that Kalen DeBoer brought in. He had him committed at Washington, then he flipped to Alabama. Uh, he's got all the tools, Gary. I think he's going to be a fantastic player. I think he had an interception, might have had a pick six in this scrimmage. I don't know if he actually took it back again. We didn't get to see it, just kind of going on second hand, but it sounds like he had a pick six. 205-348-8004. I'm told phone lines are open. In the meantime, we'll get to another email. This is from Billy in Tuscaloosa. When will a depth chart be 
released. <laughs> oh, the depth chart question. <laughs> my assumption, Billy, and I don't know because this is the first time we've worked with this coaching staff, my assumption is that it will come out game week that game week press conference just the way it did with Nick Saban, but I don't know that for a fact. I haven't what do you heard, know about it, Rod? I haven't heard. That was one of the more popular things. The Monday, the first press conference of the opener was getting that depth chart, as mm -hmm. you know. Fans like them too, right? Oh, yeah, Not just do. media. They do. Everybody <laughs> loves a depth chart. Nothing like a depth chart. Then, of course, you get the depth chart, and a lot of times in the Nick Saban era, the depth chart that you had in that press box for that first game, you look down the field and you're like, well, that's Doesn't not matching match up. up. <laughs> <laughs> that's not matching up. So you, you never really know. All right. I hope we got a, was hoping for a few more phone calls, but maybe they'll crank up next week. We do appreciate the call we got. We appreciate the emails as well. All right. We're going to come back to TITV to wrap it up. Uh, some news on a longtime Alabama NFL vet who's calling it a career. We'll have that for you next. Ten years in the National Football League was enough for former Alabama long snapper Carson Tinker, who officially called it a career on Sunday. He made his announcement on social media. Tinker posted uh, photos with a statement writing, quote, through wins and losses, injuries, championships, rejections, and opportunities that only God can make happen, I was able to achieve my impossible goal of ten seasons in the NFL. Tinker was instrumental to the support and rebuild of the city of Tuscaloosa after the 62 tornadoes that came through the state of Alabama and one ripped through Tuscaloosa back on April 27th, 2011. A great guy. And Rodney, again, um, 10 years in the NFL, that's quite an accomplishment. There aren't many people on the planet it's that can amazing. say they, they did that. It's incredible. Yeah. They're a long snapper. And great guy, too. Uh, way to go, Carson Tinker. Great career. All right, that is going to wrap it up for this edition of Tider Insider TV presented by Visit Tuscaloosa. Find out more at visittuscaloosa.com. Don't forget, if you missed any of tonight's show, you can catch a replay tonight at 1030 or online anytime at wvoa23.com. We're going to leave you with a video of Mark Sears from his youth basketball camp up at his alma mater, Muscle Shows High School. Listen. He, he, he can just rein them in. It doesn't matter if it's in a game, practice, at a camp. Rodney, I don't think he Look misses ever. For Rodney Orr, I'm Gary Harris. Thanks for watching TITV. We'll be back again next Tuesday night.